computer lives, and where I go to sleep, and where you and Daddy sleep, and where we go to swim. What did, what did I... Well, you left out the room where you're supposed to scrub behind your ears. Oh, yeah. Does the computer know everything? I mean, like, how, I mean, like, how many times to exercise and all? I haven't the faintest notion. That's just too much for your old mother to understand. Old? You're not so old. Well, I'll be 44 next year. That's not so old. Not anymore. What year is it now? I forgot. Here, I'll show you. A.D. More than a generation away, and yet dreams travel faster than light. And even now, you're like this, the oldest, strongest natural shape known. Hexagon modules that grow with a family's size and interests. Michael Shaw, 45, husband, father, is an astrophysicist. Several days each week, he commutes to a distant laboratory where he's engaged in the Mars One project, the colonization of the first planet. His minor, in the some 10 years he attended a Midwestern university, was botany. It is one of his many continuing hobbies. He is engrossed on this sunny morning in the study of the cellular structure of a new exotic fruit tree. Hopefully, his experiments will produce a giant peach with a thick protective skin, much like that of a tangerine. This is one of the many 21st century devices or appliances that are part of the everyday life of the Shaw family. This workbench with its electronic screen enables Michael to call up photographic sections of the two parent fruit trees from which he began his experiments three years ago. At that time, he stored the two photographic images in the central home computer, which is secretary, librarian, banker, teacher, medical technician, bridge partner, and all-around servant in this house of tomorrow. All pertinent information about this family, its records, its tastes, and reference material, is stored in these memory banks, available instantly to every member of the family. Master James Shaw, eight years old, student, attends formal school two mornings a week. Much of his education, however, is carried on in a kind of education center within the home. And so, an era that began 500 years earlier with Copernicus and Galileo, ends as the first astronaut takes his first halting steps onto the shores of the moon and begins a... ...and are programmed into the home computer and fed into teaching machines, which allow him to progress as rapidly as his awakening mind can absorb the audiovisual lessons.
This is Lecture 102. Galileo's life work, and indeed his personal character, can perhaps be exemplified by describing one of his early experiments. According to Aristotle, a body that falls possesses weight. Those that do not fall have no weight. Since air does not fall, it has no weight. Galileo decided to examine this conclusion in his own fashion. Karen Ann Shaw, 43, wife, mother, part-time homemaker. Hey, Mom, I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. How about lunch? How about two minutes? Okay, two minutes and counting. 120, 119. All right, but you better not show up with a dirty face. 115. 113. 112. How about chicken salad? Ugh. Cheese omelet? Cheese burger. Some french fries and a nice cold bottle of beer. I'll see. Mike, cold roast beef? Okay. Be right there. Second lunches, color keyed disposable dishes, all part of the instant society of tomorrow. A society rich in leisure and taken for granted comforts. At the turn of the next century, most food will be stored frozen in individual portions. The computer will keep a running inventory on all foodstuffs and suggest daily menus based on the nutritional needs of the family. When the meal has been selected, the various portions are fed automatically into the microwave oven for a few seconds of de-thawing or warming. The house of 1999 will be virtually maintenance-free. A central atmospheric system will maintain constant year-around temperatures and control humidity, bacteria, pollen, and dust. Clothing of the non-disposable variety will be stored in cleaning closets where a chemical vapor atmosphere and an ultrasonic vibrator will remove dirt particles. Fingertip shopping will be one of the many homemaker's conveniences. This video console will be channeled into the store of her choice. There, a camera will scan a display of wares, which she will select by push button. Another part of this console is a household monitor screen, which maintains a watch 
on critical areas in the house, swimming pool, or yard. What the wife selects on her console will be paid for by the husband at his counterpart console. All bills and transactions will be carried out electronically. A central bank computer will debit the family's account the amount of purchases and credit the department store, for example, informing the family's home computer at the same time. Father, at the touch of a button, receives an instantaneous printed copy of his budget, the amount of taxes he owes, the payments left on the car, and so forth. All documents and household records are available on the video screen for immediate reference. Also at his disposal is an electronic correspondence machine, or home post office, which allows for instant written communication between individuals anywhere in the world. To maintain these and hundreds of complex electronic circuits, a monitor checks all circuits every few seconds, inserts a backup circuit if and when trouble develops, and alerts the communal service agency for replacement. The home energy center, with its fuel cell, furnishes power, provides absolutely pure water, burns waste, and heats or cools the rooms. Too computerized? Too cold? The world of tomorrow will be as cold as sunlight tuned through photochromic windows. It will be as wide as the ocean which will provide not only recreation for the adventurers, but an increasing variety of hydra-cultured exotic fresh foodstuffs. And tomorrow will be as happy as music. Hey, Chopin, what's up? Oh, playing a song. Ah, what's it called? I forgot. You faker. How about playing the song we learned yesterday? Mm, okay. Let's augment this a bit, shall we? Okay. Life will be richer, easier, healthier as space-age dreams come true. As part of his everyday regime, Michael Shaw enters this home health center. He lies for perhaps 15 seconds on a kind of medical couch. His weight, temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure, and electrocardiogram are routinely recorded. At the same time, his body is scanned for any isolated temperature pockets that signal oncoming disease or a localized infection. At the end of the examination period, the computer calculates the amount of exercise necessary to balance Mike's food intake and maintain proper muscle tone. Exercise requirements, eight and one half minutes bicycle, six minutes programmed calisthenics. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, this thing can make a mistake, you know. Your weight increase over 30 days, 1.1 kilograms. Repeat exercise requirements, eight and one half minutes bicycle, six minutes programmed calisthenics. Confirm, please. Confirm, please. Oh. 
computer now relays any important physical changes to a central community medical center where Mike's personal physician will be alerted for further diagnosis. At conclusion of the exercise period, the pertinent data are again recorded for comparison with pre-exercise measurements. The results are again forwarded to the community medical center for further study if necessary. If the computerized life occasionally extracts its pound of flesh, it holds out some interesting rewards. Hi, Fred. How's the old golf game? Ah, uh, don't ask. Six inches of snow and a blizzard on the way. What do you got in mind? Oh, how about some golf at Pebble Beach Saturday afternoon? Great. Anything to get out of here. All right, hold on a minute. I don't know. The coast looks a little doubtful. There's a low moving in. Let me check Mexico City. Yeah, it looks great. All right, here's what we'll do. We'll meet at the El Centro about noon, have some lunch, and then we'll tee off. Great. Only this time, I'm going to have to get about two strokes aside, because I haven't been playing all winter, and I'm a little rusty, and I know that you've probably been playing every day, right? Sure. <laughs> In a virtually dirt-free environment, Karen Shaw, several hours a week, gets her hands very dirty. She's a skilled potter. Her work decorates their home and the homes of many of their friends. During her career years, she was a teacher of fine arts. Now she's able to continue practicing her crafts because the household demands on her time have been greatly finished. In the same way, Jamie, though he has a rigorous lesson schedule, is already taking advantage of his electronic world. Who's your worthy opponent? Dad. Look that trap that Bob and He's a little loose with his fish are used in the world games. Your dad will be home soon. Why don't you wait and play him live? Okay. Well, I've got things to do in the kitchen. I think I'll help you. What you doing with the oranges? I'm fixing dinner. Wait. Mm -hmm. The old-fashioned way. What's your cook stuff? Well, we're having duckling a la orange, my love. That's pretty fancy. We having company. The Shaws are giving a party. They cost you 25,000 feet. How are things in Paris, Pete? Family settled down okay? Yeah, Marge loves it. The kids are parlay booing like neighbors. <laughs> and How's the fishing in the Philippines? Oh, I've never had a fishing like that anywhere in the world. I still say, you can't beat the Amazon. If I happen to catch a live performance of a great, sensational use stinger from Puerto Rico the other night, would you like to see it? Love it, yeah. Hey, everybody. Recorded a great new singer down San Juan way the other night. Would you like to see him? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, it would. Oh, it's been a long time that I haven't seen him. I'm 
vente con mi cocinita, da donde viva el yo. Would you make me a dupe of that? I'd like to show it to some friends of ours who spend a lot of time down there. Sure. Well, I guess you want it in 3D, huh? Yeah, we finally made the switch. Well, you got to keep up with the times, you know. Yeah, but, um... But what? What's next? <laughs>